this has been the best year at Limitless Church. But still, there's a feeling inside that this year could have been a little bit better. Come on now. But I have some good news. Anyone here interested in some good news? I have some good news. Because the year is still not over. Oh, 2023 is still not over. There is a little bit left <laughs> in 2023. There, there is a little part left in 2023. There's one little week left in 2023. There's just seven days left in 2023. Seven days? Seven days, can, can you count? T tonight's 24th, it's over, but 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, I got seven days, anyone got the same math? Seven days, you're calculating, yeah, yeah, seven days, there's still seven days left in 2023. And last time I checked, a lot, not little, now it's a lot that can happen in seven days. Last time I read my Bible, there was a lot that happened in seven days. In the right hands, there's a lot that can happen in seven days. In God's hands, there's a lot that can happen in seven days. For God, seven days is a lot of time. For God, seven days is enough time to create the entire universe and everything around it. For God, seven days is enough time to create everything that he ever created. He did not take a day more than seven days. So that tells me that seven days is all the time that God ever needs. Oh, I don't think they understood this. I said seven days is all the time that God needs. Everything that he ever created, he created in one, two, three, four, five, seven days. Days, not a day more. So seven days is all the time that God needs to create everything that he can ever create in your life. And guess what? If you count, if you know to count, if you know basic math, there are exactly seven days in 2023. And I'm wondering, Sunil, because you're the only one responding to me right now. I'm wondering if God could create the whole world in seven days. I'm wondering if God could create a miracle in your life in seven days. I, I'm, I'm wondering if God could create the whole world in seven days. I'm wondering if God could create a job for you in seven days. I'm wondering if God could create a career for you in seven days. I'm wondering if God could create a new organ in your body. I'm wondering if God could create a miracle in your life in seven days. What you... I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering, I'm wondering if God could fill the earth in seven days, then I'm wondering if he could fulfill every promise he made for you. What do you think? Well, I'm wondering if God could make all things come alive. I'm wondering if God could make all things possible. And I'm just wondering if there's anyone willing to believe with me. Anyone willing to walk by faith in the next seven days? Because Christmas is not just the most wonderful time of the year. Christmas is the most powerful time of the year. And I don't know about you. But I refuse to let go of 2023 without receiving everything that God has promised me. Oh, no, 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 no. I am not going to enter 2024 yet. Not so soon because 2023 is not over yet. And I'm believing for the best, not yet to come, but for the best this seven days. Any believers in the house, any believers wanting to receive the promise, anyone as 
stingy as me and as believing as me not to let go of 2023. I'm going to squeeze everything out. I'm not going to let this, I'm not going to waste this week getting drunk. I'm not going to waste this week getting wasted. I'm not getting going to waste this week getting fat. I'm not going to waste this week getting entertained. I'm not going to waste this week chilling with friends and family. No, 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 no. This week I'm going to pray and I'm going to believe and I'm going to walk by faith for the next uh, seven days. Oh, you thought you came for a cute Christmas service? No. <laughs> You've come to a house of faith. Because starting tomorrow, in fact, starting tonight, there are things that are going to change in your life. Oh, seven days. You know why? Say why, I'll tell you why. The answer is on the screen. Because this is Christmas. Oh, this is Christmas. Faith is Christmas. Believing is Christmas. Walking by faith, making all things possible is Christmas. Because if you think about it, Mary, who needed the angel the most, she's left all alone. Mary, who needed the heavenly host the most, is all alone. Mary who needed a word from heaven the most, she's all alone, right? Mary who needed, who was called highly favored, remember that? Before she was pregnant, now that she's actually giving birth to the son, she's all alone. Mary who's carrying the savior of the world is all alone. And I know she had Joseph. I know Joseph, her husband, was with her, but Mary would have felt all alone alone because look listen Mary knew what she had inside of her but Joseph did not really know Mary knew the child inside of her was conceived by the Holy Spirit but Joseph did not really know Mary knew that what was inside of her was really Jesus but Joseph did not really know you, you, you heard that song Mary did you know Anyone heard that song? Yeah, she knew. She, she really knew, right? Because the Bible says that she did not know any man. And it's impossible, impossible to become pregnant without knowing a man. But what is impossible with man is possible with God. So Mary knew this has to be God. Mary knew this has to be the son of Almighty God. She knew it. But Joseph did not really Oh, and I know Joseph had a dream and all of that, right? He, he saw an angel, but in his dream. And can you really trust your dreams? Huh? Mary knew, Joseph did not know. In fact, no one in the world knew what was happening inside Mary. No one in the world knew what Mary had inside of her. So check this out. Check this out. Mary had the burden of knowing Jesus in a world that does not know Jesus. Has anyone felt that feeling that Mary felt? I'm talking to you now. This is conversation. Have you ever felt that burden of knowing Jesus in a world that does not know Jesus? Have you ever felt that burden of knowing Jesus in an office that does not know Jesus? Have you ever felt that burden of knowing Jesus in a family that does not know Jesus? Have you ever felt that burden of knowing Jesus in a community, in a country that does not know Jesus? Come on, talk to me. Have you ever felt like you've given your life to Jesus, but everyone in your life thinks that you're out of your mind? Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like all you have is a promise from God, but everything that's happening in your life is opposite to your promise? Have you ever felt like that? Yes. Come on now. A anyone talking to me back? Yes. Because that is what Mary had. She only had a promise. All that Mary had was just a promise. 
All that Mary had was just this promise that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and overshadow you and you're going to conceive and bring forth a child. That's all she had, a promise. And there are people in this room, that's why you're quiet, because all you have is just a promise. All you have it's just a promise. And maybe it's a promise that God is going to heal you of that disease that doctor said cannot be healed. But it's just a promise. Maybe it's a promise that God's going to give you your own business. But it's just a promise. Maybe all you have is a promise that God is going to give you your own family, your own house. But it's just a promise. Right? Right? Promises are great, but the problem with the promise is the promise is just a promise. That's why you come to church and you, you get all excited. Some of you are not excited in church also. Nothing. God can, I don't know who can, next Christmas, come next Christmas. Maybe something will happen to you. But, but, but others, right? You come to church, you get all excited, you say, oh yeah, amen, and all of that. But when you go home, you're all alone. You feel like, all that I got is just a promise. Come on now. When you see your friends prospering, you see real prosperity. They're buying cars, they're buying homes, but all you have is a promise. Deuteronomy 28, 11, the Lord has given you abundant prosperity. But it's all just a promise. Come on now. Most people in this room, all you have is just a promise. All I can give you, all I can preach to you is just a a promise right that's why you're feeling so low that's why you're not so excited that's why you're not that's why believers have one thing that they're not good at guess what it is believing, believing. the one thing that believers are not good at is believing why because all you have is just a promise that's why you need Christmas that's why you need to come here for Christmas. That's why you need to know what Christmas is really about. Because Christmas tells you that all you need is just a promise. The story of Christmas tells you that all you need is just a word. You might not have money, but you have a word. You might not have a plan, but you have the word. You might not know how it's going to happen, but you have the word. You might not have the right connections, but you have the word. You might not have the right people in your life, but you have the word. You might not have a lot of time, but you have the word. You might only have seven days, but you have the word. And the story of Christmas shouts at your face and tells you all you need is just a word. Because if you have the word and if you hold the word inside of you, like Mary held on to the word. If you carry the word in your heart, if you believe the word like Mary did in her heart, then the word, check this out, will become flesh. The word will become real. The word will become a reality. The word will become flesh and start dwelling in your life. All you need is a word. And if you really hold on to that word inside of you like Mary, the word will come to pass. Because if God said it, I can't hear you. If God said it, if God said it, if God spoke it, if God wrote it, then it has to happen. The word has to come to pass. This is Christmas. I don't care what your belief is. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what your background is. I don't care what church you belong to. I don't care if you belong to a limitless church or going to leave the church tonight. I don't care what you're going to do after this. But I'm telling you this into your face. The word of God has to come to pass. If God said it, it has to happen. I refuse. I refuse to live as a Christian. I refuse to live as a believer and not believe that the word will come to pass or oh, you will get healed you will prosper you will succeed 
that promise will come to pass. You're going to have a child. Yeah. Barren woman, you're, you're going to have a child. Jobless people are going to get jobs. Businesses suffering, you're going to prosper. The word of God has to come to pass because this is Christmas. The Christmas story shouts at you and says, all you need is like Mary, hold on to the word in your heart and don't let go. No matter what happens around you, no matter if you have unbelievers around you and gossipers around you, no matter what people say around you, you just hold that word. No matter even if your husband does not completely know anything, no matter if your wife does not know a lot of the Bible, it's fine. You hold the word in your heart and if you hold it long enough, the word will become flesh and start dwelling in your life. This is Christmas.